G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Gonna do a paint today, and I wanna show you how to do the sun hiding behind some clouds and just spitting up bright colors within the sky and reflecting all over the water there as well. All right, I'll put the size up there for you so you know what size my canvas is, and I'll also get a couple of colors going up the screen as well. Not too many in this one, maybe one, two, I don't know, three, four, five, just a couple anyway. All right, now I've scribbled something out over here. You'll make sense of it once you've watched the video once and you come back and ready to paint again with me, okay? So you'll know what's gonna happen. So get on right over here and I'll start showing you what I'm gonna do. Now it's in portrait layout and I'm just gonna have some different values of some distant hills, mountains here, whatever, and then some dif di different foliage, dif different distances. Uh, the water and the sun's going to be setting behind some clouds okay it's going to be different easy and effective if you think you can't do it just practice okay now I want to prime my canvas with some craft white and some I've got some retarder in there as well the retarder for those people who don't know that'll slow down the drying time of your acrylic now I'm going to get my putter on a brush and mix those two together so as I make a beautiful primer when you want to blend a sky the way oil artists do and if you're not that worried about blending the way they do or the way i do you don't need the retarder only unless you want to slow down the drying time of your acrylic paint so we'll get the sky half done now i love this putter on a brush as a lot of you know but if you're new here it gets the paint on in no time at all it don't muck around Look at that. Now where I'm going to have me land, I don't really want retarded paint there, so I'll just sort of go like that. All right, and then push that in all the two for the canvas. Now I'm painting on a canvas cloth. Where are we? There we go. I'm painting on a canvas cloth. The better the surface you paint on and the better the quality of the paint, you'll get a better result. Now I'm going to brush that left and right like a gentleman and get all the lumps out of it ready to put our sky in there. That was easy, step one, you can do that. Okay, step two, I'm just gonna use my red gold. And I'm feeling a bit of gray in this sky as well. So I'll get a little bit of gray up there as well. All right, and we're going to use this color here. This is red gold or a deep orange or Australian sienna. Get that right into me, put her on a brush. And if anything, that's going to be my orange and that's going to be the grey. That's what's going through my mind. All right, so I'll get this, put it on around there like that with this putter on a brush. Just like that. Go to the horizon line there. Now I'm starting to use the tip of me putter on a brush to... Now I'm going to pull that left and right like a gentleman. Beautiful. Look at that. Look how good and quick this paint gets on with that brush. Now, lo and behold, you know what? Oh, I wouldn't mind a bit more dark down the bottom of you there. So what I'll do is I'll just pick some more of that up and I'll stamp it on. Stamp it on to create the darker and then I can push it in. All right. Look at that. beautiful 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 i'm loving that i'm using the tip of this brush now just to stroke the paint nice and even so i don't need to grab another brush and blend all that this putter on a brush does it all in the one take that's why i love it and if you want this and the blending brushes i use message me on facebook now i've cleaned that brush because i want to pick up me gray now this is just a mid-tone gray have I got enough there? I reckon hopefully I have. And I'm going to crisscross this into that orange sky. Roughly in that area there. Boom, -bitty, boom, boom, boom. Let it fade out. There we go. And I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles now and pull that through the sky. And we've got that there like so. Oh, that's beautiful. I've got that tinge of grey there. Now it probably looks different in the camera, but it's looking good in real life. Now I've got a fan brush. Now that orange, 
Okay, the red gold. I'm picking that up and adding some burnt umber. Okay, so, so far what I've done on the canvas, you can do that, it's very doable. Now I'm mixing up the cloud cover here. Uh, I'll go a little bit more darker, just slowly adding the darker value to the lighter pile, not the other way around. And we're going to blend this into that sky while it's still wet. So I want to get maybe all this some cloud, okay? Down here, coming along here, dancing that on. And I want to get all this jingle jangled. I'm twisting this brush just to sort of push that down into that color there. All right, now I'm going to grab my blending brush. And I want to blend the top of this into there in the way that I'm after. And then the bottom can happen later on its own. There we go, watch, watch what's happening here. Now, I've got a lot of that dark color in my brush. It's important to wipe it. I'm coming along the top. Sort of pulling bits into it as well like that. That's looking all right. How are we there? Get some lines there like so. Now I can blend this down willy-nilly to the atmosphere there. And I'm going to have to add some more. I'm going to pick up some more of that paint that I mixed up. And then start... I'm going to darken it up a bit more. Get some of it scissoring. I'll do one half first because I'm feeling maybe the um, paint's starting to dry on me. So I want to get this into there and then I'll bring that down. That's okay, beautiful. Just burned umber. Now I'll grab the other side. I'm kind of fingering it into the middle of that. Get right down to this orange there. blend that into there. This is all acrylic paints I use. A lot of people ask, what do I use acrylics? Oh, that's the only paints I do paint in acrylics, yes. All right, now I'm gonna get some more. Now I wanna finish the sky here, so I wanna get some of these little bit skinny there and coming a bit fatter here, right off the painting like that. I've gotta grab another blending brush because that one got a, a bit dirty. And I want to <clears throat> pull that like that. Look at that, whoosh, right into the middle, pointing into the middle of the paint. And not bad, eh? You can do that. <clears throat> Wipe that. And we'll do some on the other side as well. So we'll probably get a bit there and then coming wider. Artistically do it, because we're all artists. Well, we want to be artists, don't we? Pull that into the middle like that. There we go, lovely and blend that as well coming out of the edge of the painting into the middle. A few more facets up here like that and maybe there like that. A bit darker right there, Ian. Come on, there we go. I'll do this bit over here first and I can do the right-handed side. Beautiful. See how I did that with the brush? It's all with the brush. You just got to practice these procedures. Okay, I've got a pouncer and we're going to pounce. All this paint here is what I mix the retarder in. I'm just going to grab some of that because that bit there doesn't have retarder. I don't need retarder in this. And I just want to load me pouncer up with some of this paint. It's white. The paint on the board's still a bit damp maybe, so it's not going to be pure white anymore, which is fine. And I want the sun peeking behind here so I want to get like the top of it there where are we about here so I'm pushing just the top on the bottom might go on a little bit yeah it did that's okay whoa don't get nervous that'll do because I want to sink it down now okay that's all I did that's all I needed all right now what I want to do is just grab my finger you can leave it like that or you can do what I'm doing now. I want to pull
pull some of that white off. See what I'm doing? I'm sucking it off with my finger. Even if you've got no gloves on, you can still do this. I'll get all that blended with my finger. Beautiful, get the peaks out of it. It's looking very arty. Now, we're grabbing the red gold. Where's another fan brush? Just another fan brush will do here. And a little bit of white just to push that sun back. Have we got the right colour there? No, we need a bit more red gold. Everything is wet. I'm going to be put this on like a cloud. So there's the top. Kiss that sun down. Put this on like that. Come along. Get rid of that white. Don't want that. Pick up some more of that. Stamp this on like you stamp. You, you see me stamp clouds on, right? So do that. Put that down like a gentleman. Pick up a blending brush. I'll grab a smaller one now. And I just want to sit that bottom bit down into this bottom colour there. And it's, that is a bit brighter now because obviously the sun's there. I'm just looking, I want to get some of this now within just to, so it doesn't look floating, it's got some kind of aspect of realism to it. How's that looking? That's okay, I want maybe a little bit just here, just to get that colour down a bit more. I'm just tapping it, looking what I'm doing and sm smearing it down. Okay, there we go. Now there's my horizon line there, but I don't want you people putting everything right on top of that. You could see the line, but I've bought the main foreground bit below it as well. You want it below it and over it, not just on top of it. Now I'm gonna do the different colors with the burnt umber, simply a couple of different shades. So we'll get a lighter value. I've just got the craft white here and we'll get some craft white. I'm just using a, pull that over. I'm just using a filbert brush, a hog bristle filbert brush to be exact. If those people want to know what's exactly, what's he using? That's what I'm using, just a hog bristle. And we're going to get a bit of this in thus one's distance. So we are, there's, I've got one there. So this one's sort of going to come there. Okay. Now this one is pretty much here. So I'm going to do it in the shape that I like the trees to be, just like that. They're distant, so they're not too detailed, okay? They've just sort of got that shape to them, and that's, there like that. So it's going to have little tree tops here. I'm not worried if the top's a bit messy bessy because that's not a straight line. Block that off like that and come down to those other line of trees there as well which I penciled in. I could have should have dried it where that joins so it doesn't because it's mudding up where those two are joining. That's okay, I can easily dry it off camera. All right, I've dried that. Now I'm getting a darker value of that brown. And what I will do just to put onto the palette is add, add a little bit of black as well, because for the very final bit, I'm probably gonna need a bit of black in it, but I just want this brown now. And this is going to dance in front of that different now I don't know if I told you but I did dry it and it's going to come down to that point there where my pencil line is I've drawn it into pencil it's going to have a big drop down point there right to there Oh, 
All right, so that's our third bit. Now I'll just block that in a bit darker. Okay, I've patted that in, it's dry. Now before I put this main one over the water and everything, I'm gonna get the water color in. Very easy, just grabbing some of this craft white that's already down here. It's probably got a little bit more retarder left in it, it doesn't matter because we do want to be putting some detail on top of this water, some swell ripples. You know those soft swirling ripples? So we'll probably bring it up to about there-ish, just to there. Get all this in, and then we're just going to pretty much mimic the sky colours into here. So I'll get all that just brushed along there like that. Rub it down nice and smooth like a gentleman. Look at that. Now I'm going to wipe that brush and I want to grab the red gold again and we'll get the majority of our water in. So we're going to put this in along with the browns. So pretty much from here, bang it on and let it fade up. Look how quick this put it on a brush works, hey? it's fantastic using the tip of the brush now like a gentleman and I'm stroking it beautiful uh, I might get some more mid-band radiation happening through there now uh, what's mid-band radiation Ian it's just stuff like this mid-band in the middle of the water there and they're radiating through mid-band radiation and then we're going to stroke that like a gentleman as well and keep pushing it down I want to keep pushing it down because it's too loud and I want to get it, got something on the edge of my brush there. There we go. Now we're going to get the browns up there. Everything's still wet on that white. So we'll pick up some of this brown here. Ah, so we'll come there. I'll just use the edge of the brush like this. Boom, buddy, boom, boom, boom. There. Right against the horizon there. Done. Now I'm picking up more. And I'm going to mid-band radiate this. See, it's darker. Mid-band radiate. What a word, eh? <laughs> All right, and it's going to sort of come this way, sort of come this way. <clears throat> yeah, sort of come around like that. And let's hope I can pull this off. Now, I want to wipe that. I'll bring this oh in there like that stop i'll wipe it same on this side boom right into the middle of the water like that then i can do the top bit i've got just burnt umber on its own there's nothing else with it i'm getting it on the tip of me put her on a brush this put her on a brush is so good for so many different things and i pretty much want to well a uh, bit of a band, a high mid band radiating through here now, just like that. See, see what I did there? And bring it back there. Uh, there we go. Now I've got to wipe it. And we'll come. Yay, Ray. Oh, yes. I'm happy with that. Wipe it. And I'll come from this side now. All the way across, that's it, done. Now back to our pouncer. We wanna get that damp with some of the craft white, but we wanna use the actual titanium white here. And it can be hindered with a little bit of that. Just a little bit of that. Now there's our sun. So we want to come from here. And do that in a straight line like that. Let it fade away. That's it, just there like that. Grab your putter on her or a blending brush, something. We just want to waterfy that now. And why I use craft, I mean not craft paint, the other paint, it's thicker. I found when I do this with just the craft paint it pushes it to buggery and you've got nothing left there we go that's fine 
Now I want to get those swirls in the water, so I'm going to use this darker colour and this orangey colour with a brush like this. Uh, now I want to get that value, where are we, there we go, that's the value I want. And we'll start from about here. And they're going to come there, there. Now stop and reload your brush, you don't want this paint breaking up, you want it reasonably sharp. There, I'm going to go over that one again. Because you don't get to do too many passes of this, it sort of can wipe it out. Pretty much. They can sort of bend upwards. They don't have to be dead straight. And I'm just using my bullshit stick here to get them bullshittingly straight. And you can see what's happening there. Oh, there we go. stick how it just allows me to paint effortlessly those lines thick a bit longer we're coming right across the um, the moon reflection there as well and I'm going to quickly get some of the orange ones in there as well just so you can see what's going to happen here just under some of those in between and under where are we Now just another thing what I'm doing here before I put those island, the final islands on, I'm getting a, another band just of the darker, just I tried doing it free end but I was going all over the place so I just want to get a, a darker band so it's indicating wind on top of the water making different colours and reflections of everything so this is just a pretty much a dark band over here. Where are we? You could see. See, this is this side is where I went freehand, and it was going all over the darn place, darn thing, darn it, darn it. She's all right though. It's great. It's all right. That's why we have a bullshit stick to get bullshit features. Gee, just get carried away. Let me have a look in there. See what that's done. Yeah, it's just made up that. Now I just want to shimmer there. Now the best way to do shimmer, I've just sprayed some water here. I've got a flat faced toothbrush and I'll get that in the water. Let's just flatten that out a bit more first. And then I have get the toothbrush in the water, then I start pulling this through and it's going to have it a nice inky consistency, a flickable consistency. And you've just got the very tips loaded up. It's not all blobbed in there and full of blobs and gunk. And we'll try not to get any on the... Um, trees there if I do I'll just have to paint over it and you can get this as fine as you want look at that now I'm going to add a bit more water because I just feel it's not enough here we go but when you flick this it, you, it pays to practice this as well because you don't want to get like spaghetti looking dots on there you want them to be looking like the shimmer on the water and if you can help it do not have it 
funneling wide towards the horizon line. If anything, you have it coming from the horizon line and out to you here where you're looking at the picture. Goodness me, get on there, will you? There we go, there we go. So, so out here it's going to radiate. And this shimmer is just wickedly good additives. There we go. Now I'll just add that middle, the last of the foreground here. For that, I've got black and burnt umber together. So it's going to be even darker than the actual burnt umber itself. Okay. And we're going to use our bullshit stick here just to get the baseline level. And then we can do the rest freehand. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'll grab my bullshit stick. Now I'm using a flat brush first and then I'll finish it off with my filbert. But the flat is just going to do the underneath bit. And like I said, I want to come under the horizon line. So we can have a level line there and it can be broken up level. See what I've done there? You'll see when I move the stick away. Uh, this one can come about here. And a bit more there broken up. And you know what? I even want a bit of a gap. And then I'll use the filbert that I had. And I will get this in its appropriate colour now out there. Now the sun's going down, you're miles away. This is not going to have a beautiful mirror image reflection. I'm going to have to do this a few times because see how this is getting a bit see-throughy? You don't want your work see-throughy. You want it looking good and mistimely good. And you can see how just changing that lower than the horizon line and a bit of black here and like a bit of gaps in between stuff it just makes things more interesting, a bit more real. If you look at real life, it'll make you do these habits and procedures within your work. So I'm gonna dry this now and then double coat this just so as you'll see what it'll look like. Okay, I've just darkened that up and dried it. Now before I put some birds in there, I want to put some birds flying in this because it's a swampy sort of bird thing. I'm just grabbing the white and using my leaner on a stick. If someone can message me and tell me what these are actually called, they have a name but I don't know. Um, I just want to get some of this a bit more detail within some of this shimmer on the lake here just in Periodic, periodical bands, is that the word I'm looking for? Just about there. Yeah, that'll do. Now we're going to do some little groovy little birds. Just simple black will do. That colour we used for the last mountains and more black I've got here. And we'll just do some birds flying over the sky, you know, up into the sunset sort of thing. So we're, uh, we'll put one about, where's the camera see all of this? Yes. So we'll get one about here somewhere. Hey. Bit of a body like that. And then a bit of a thick and a skinny wing. Now these birds are gonna be all over the place. I'm not just gonna do them patney and, um, you know, we'll get one down here somewhere. They're scooting all over the place. So bear with me a minute while I do these. Uh, where are we? We've got a, a head there. Bush. There's his head. And then we've got a wing all the way up here. I hope that's a wing. Oh my god. Yeah, that'll do. I, don't, I won't go too technical. Um, we'll get one here.
reasonably close. I wish I could just sit down. Does that look like a bird flying? Yeah, because I want all different ones. That's the aspects of it all. Now you do your silhouetted birds however you want. Oh. Now I'll just sign this and we'll whack a frame on it. Now have a look at all the links in the description below. Purchase my art and support my content. Uh, you message me on the Facebook link there. Um, if you want to buy any paintings or my blending brushes. I want to thank all my patrons who support my content every month. Much appreciated. Okay, we'll whack a frame on that. And there you go. That's not too shabby. We've got some birds flying in the evening sunset and some beautiful smooth rippling water and some distant land there. And I know something like that, you can do it. Yeah, and it doesn't look too half bad in a frame either, does it? Look at those colours. Nice, simple and easy. You can make yours as dark or as light as you like. I've got a bit of a sore knee, but that's all right. Now, be sure to tell your friends if you like what you've seen on my channel. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.